Okay, so now that we've got Paint Pot Plus saved, we're going to add some enhancements. One of the first things we're going to do here is to remove the big dot and small dot and make a slider so that folks can use a variable size. So I'm just going to remove these two buttons right here to start with. And I'm going to move the white button up here with the rest of the buttons. Now this is a scrolling arrangement. I've already created it. Don't delete the old one until you've moved your buttons into the scrolling arrangement. Otherwise, everything inside that arrangement will be deleted. I'm going to find the slider here under user interface and put it into this horizontal arrangement. It is no longer a navigation arrangement. So let me change this to horizontal slider. And this slider is a slider for size. We could also use these for colors, but I'm going to make this my slider for size. And it should go all the way across. If we're going to let folks use a slider, give them as much control over that size as you're able to. So it's going to fill parent. Again, not going to change here on the design screen, but we will see that happen on our emulator here in just a moment. Now I do have a minimum and maximum value for the properties of that slider. These can be changed and coded in the programming, but let's just start with 1 and 100 for now, so that we've got a range of values. Uh, notice that you're not locked into those colors either. You can choose a different color. All right, let's see what our emulator is showing. And you can see that we do have a slider that we can move, but we don't have any idea how big that is. One of the things I'll be teaching you later is to change this title to give the user useful information. It, it could very well be saying your brush size is now, and it'll take that value and put it right there. That'll help our users out. Next, let's go code. So take a look at the blocks here, and you might say, yes, these are nicely organized, but just because they're all in a row doesn't mean they're organized. When you have variables, they get initialized at the beginning and just once. So group your variables together so that they're easy to find up here at the top. Okay, very important for anybody to help you to be able to say, okay, let's take a look at your variables. If they're scattered about, that's going to be a real problem. Same thing with our buttons for color. They go across the top of the screen. So it makes sense to me to kind of line them up that way. And I know if I'm looking for more colors, I'm just going to keep scrolling along until I find the one that's giving us trouble. Leave some room underneath those because we're going to be adding more to the code in there. The main things that happen here are when the canvas is dragged and when the canvas is touched. Notice we have an error here. Uh, drawing canvas no longer has an underscore. So there we fix that. And then you've got a couple buttons. Uh, that we can group together, one for wiping, one for going home. Notice the closed screen. Do not open screen one again. And now we want to use our slider's value. So right now we're using get global dot size, and we're not going to use that variable for this anymore. In fact, we don't need any of these variables if we're going to use the slider, because the slider has its own value built in. Let's find slider size here. There are a number of different things you can do with the slider. I'm going to look for its thumb position. So the number value between 1 and 100, depending on where that thumb position is, is this right here. So I can take the slider's thumb position, and it will draw a radius of that size. If we want to draw a line that's that width as well, there is no purple block that includes includes a line width, the same way that the radius was here. But if we click on canvas, you can scroll down here and you can find that the drawing canvas does have a line width. So this is get the line width and this is set the line width. So I'm going to put it in here, it usually takes twice, and I am going to then just copy and paste this. No need to go and find it again, just draw it right there. And let's take a look and see what that does with our emulator. So if we've got our dots, you can see that that's a big dot. It's changed to red. Now it's a smaller one. Go all the way over. It can be a very, very tiny little dot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the screen and draw. And there you've got your line width. And yes, 
it's a jaggedy kind of line it's not terribly pretty that's just the way that this works um, I did find an alternative that looks like this so instead of drawing a line I'm gonna remove all of this and just have it draw dots over and over again so I'm gonna copy and paste that and put in there instead now notice there is an error. When dragging, it's not just one simple x, y where it was touched. You have, well, I'm going to use the current x and the current y. And it's going to draw the dot wherever the cursor is or wherever your finger is. Let's take a look here. And now as I draw, it draws a much smoother line. Unless you go too fast and then it skips. So there are some limitations here, but you could let your users know to draw a smoother line, just draw slowly or something along those lines. You could even add it as a feature where you could switch between those two using a variable. But for the moment, if you don't like those jagged lines at all, then that's something else that you could do. And you might even say do this twice and draw the current one as well as the previous X and Y. And that way it'll draw two dots for every time you're dragging along. But that is using a slider to give us a little more variety.